right, so in this lab, we are going to look a little bit more in depth into the options and properties for how we do uh, key point extraction and image matching in uh, photo alignment in, in Agisoft Metashape. And we're going to take a look at uh, the quality reports and how we get some information out of there to see how good of a model we've, we've put together with the images that we have. So we're going to start from this lab sort of forward. We're going to start working with the imagery set that we collected out at Parker Farm um, uh, a couple weeks ago. And so the first thing I want to do, uh, I have a sort of new Metashape project. I'm going to go to Workflow and Add Folder. And I'm going to come into the, uh, the, the directory where I have the images. Um, the lab will actually have a, a link where you can download all these images, put them on your computer. And uh, so when you add a folder, then it's going to say, OK, there's a whole bunch of images in here. What, what do these actually mean? Uh, what kind of camera is this? These are our single camera images. So uh, just choose that and, and click OK. And uh, it's going to load all of these images in. You can see the dots where it sort of placed them uh, in its sort of general spot where it thinks that they uh, should be. And uh, the photos show up uh, down here in the, in the photo tray at the bottom. Um, now, in the previous lab, we just kind of like aligned the photos from here. We just let it rip. But we want to take a minute and actually look at some of the properties. And the first thing we want to do is check out the camera calibration properties. And so from the menu, that's under Tools and Camera Calibration. And this is going to open a window pane up where it's, it's going to give you sort of like what it knows about the, uh, uh, the properties of the camera. And, uh, and so it's getting all this information from the image header. Uh, that, that, that you know the header information that's coming in in, in each uh, each of these photos and if you had multiple uh, say you know you had photos from several different drones and you were combining those together it would it would actually list multiple cameras here on the, on the left hand side and then tell you which image came from from which camera all of these are coming from the same camera so the properties are all going to be the same and uh, it's got a little bit of basic information. It's a frame type camera. It, uh, you know, here's the actual pixel size uh, that it got from the header. Here's the stated focal length uh, of that camera. And then these parameters here, you know, this F, the K parameters and stuff, these are all the, the distortion parameters that it needs to sort of figure out to, to really get a handle on what that interior orientation of the camera is. And it doesn't know what any of those are right now. And so we're going to use the software to, uh, to estimate what these properties are. If we actually had like a really well calibrated camera, we could just load those properties up in here and then skip that step in the process. It would actually save us quite a bit of time. And, uh, and if you have a really high quality camera, it can actually result in some really, really nice, good high quality results. The, the one thing that, that I do want to sort of point out here and kind of why we're coming in here is that so that the DJI Mavic that we flew has a rolling shutter. It's not a global shutter camera and, uh, and Agisoft can, can uh, accommodate that or, or sort of correct for that. And, uh, but we have to turn it on. And so that option is right here under enable rolling shutter compensation. So make sure you check that and then click OK here. Okay, now at this point, we're pretty much ready to, to align these photos. And so under Workflow, we can go to Align Photos. And uh, I'm going to expand this Advanced Options here. And then I'll just sort of walk through what all of these things mean. So accuracy refers to um, what the resolution of the image is, is that, that Metashape is going to use to extract these key points. And so if we chose Highest, Okay, that's going to use the original uh, images at their full resolution and extract key points from that. Uh, in each one of these steps that we go down, it's going to decrease that resolution by a factor of four. And so it's resampling these images to a lower resolution and then it's going to pull the key points off of those. All right, so, so high is, uh, is, you know, the pixel sizes are four times uh, what they are in. Uh, uh, the original images and then medium, the pixel sizes are actually 16 times the size that they are in the original images. And that seems like 
man, that's crazy. Why would we want to uh, resample those images and lose all that information? Well, it ends up making the whole process a lot faster and, and uh, you can actually get really great results from uh, models created with images that are not at the highest resolution. And so medium is usually a pretty good starting point. Uh, running on high or highest uh, a lot of times does not give you a significantly better model, but it takes uh, a crazy amount more time to process it. Okay, so these next options here, uh, generic pre-selection, that is uh, where uh, Agisoft is actually going to run a model on the lowest accuracy setting first in order to kind of get a handle on, on where these, these uh, photos are and how they're oriented to then speed up a uh, uh, um, uh, alignment use at, at sort of a higher resolution, right? And so um, generally it's worth your time to use the generic pre-selection. Um, it saves a lot of time on the, on the downstream end, okay? Uh, reference pre-selection is going to use the, the sort of any kind of location information that you have. So it could be like the GPS uh, coordinates for photos to figure out like which photos are they nearby that I should be looking for matches in um, as opposed to which photos are really far away that I don't want to really be looking at, uh, for matches in. And so uh, using uh, reference pre-selection is usually a good idea if you have some sort of rough location information already for your photos, it'll speed things up. Okay, under advanced here, the key point limit is how many key points it will generate per image. That's the maximum number, okay? Um, if you set this value to zero, it will generate an unlimited number, like there won't be a maximum that it can generate for the, for the image. The problem with that is that you get a lot of crappy key points, okay? So, so something around 40,000 or 60,000 um, key points per image is probably a, 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 you know, a good starting point. Tie points, though, are how many of those key points can you actually have to link to other images, okay? And so it can, you can have up to, in this case, 4,000 of these key points can be linked to uh, key points in other images and, and serve as tie points. The reason, if you set this to zero, it will, it will uh, you know, keep all of the, the potential tie points that it finds. The problem with that, though, is again, you get a lot of really lousy tie points, and then you end up having to filter those out later. And so the general rule of thumb is you want about 10% uh, of the value you put in key points as, as tie points, okay? And so these default values of 40,000 and 4,000 are usually pretty good, right? Um, and then the last one, this adaptive camera model fitting, um, that is where it's going to then estimate what those distortion parameters are for your, for your camera. So go ahead and, and click that. When you're ready, just go ahead and click OK, and it will start that alignment process. Now, you know, we've got a couple, well, more than 100 images. I think we've got 100, close to 150 images here, and so this is going to take a little bit of time. So. I don't want to sit here for that, and you don't want to sit here just watching my screen um, for the time it's going to take. So I'm going to pause here, and then we'll come back uh, when the alignment is done. Okay, so that took about 13 minutes on my laptop to do the photo alignment, and uh, you'll notice here that it popped up this warning box at the end saying it couldn't align one of the photos. You know, you'll get that occasionally, especially if you have like a, a blurry photo or a an irregular uh, flight line, something like that. So just kind of be prepared for this. Sometimes you can manually uh, fix those. We're not going to really spend a lot of time working on that, but um, you know, know that there are strategies for doing that. Uh, we can see sort of where this photo is. So you, you can see that it's replaced the, the dots with the actual like photo thumbnails uh, because it's estimated the exterior orientation of all the photos. And if I kind of rotate this around and look sort of sideways at it. Down here at the bottom, there's this, uh, this little dot, and that is the photo that it couldn't align. And, uh, you know, we can, if I zoom in on it enough, it'll actually give us the number of that photo, so 649, so I can look at this in the photo tray. And, oh yeah, look here at the bottom, it's, a, it's an oblique photo that we, uh, we took manually when we were just playing around with the drone that we forgot to sort of screen out. And so in this case, we don't want that photo. And so I can just right click on it and do remove cameras. 
and it will uh, just delete it from the project. Okay, so there's nothing really for us to, uh, to, to do at this point. All right, so now let's just take a minute and kind of look at the result that we got. Um, you know, we can look at this thing from the side. If we actually tilt it up, check out I've got a bunch of like spurious points that are showing up kind of like below ground level, some that are sort of too high for the ground level here, right? And some of these points in the vegetation are probably not all that great either. Um, moving vegetation is particularly hard to, uh, to match, right? And so you would expect some of these points are probably not the best in the world either. And so what we want to try to do at this stage then is like improve this, this model. I want to run through a couple of tools that we're going to use to sort of assess how well we're doing and then we'll actually get into the refinement. So for any photo, I can right click on that photo and go look at view matches and it will show me like all of the other photos that it found potential uh, tie points to. And if I click on one of these, then it, it's a little hard to see here. I can make it a little bit bigger. Um, but it's actually showing sort of like where those tie points are in the images. The blue lines are for the valid tie points and the pink lines are for those tie points that were not the highest quality ones. And because we set this 4,000 point limit, then these are ones that, that either got screened out for that reason or got screened out just because they weren't very good points. All right, if I scroll down here and pick another image that uh, uh, has a lot fewer tie points. Okay, well, this one is, uh, you can see the tie points and, and um, this image has to be rotated in order to fit, to match up with this, okay? So this tool becomes useful if you have images that aren't aligning well and you need to just get in and, and try to figure out what's going on. So um, just, you know, kind of a useful one to, to keep in mind. Um, the other sort of thing that we want to do right now is actually create a report. And we, we did a report on the, on the previous lab, but under File, Export, Generate Report, okay? And this is lab four, uh, so we'll just you know, call it that. Um, and uh, we're gonna uh, give it a name. Um, this is the pre-optimization report. I've actually run this lab before already, so I'm just gonna overwrite these. Um, so. Uh, We'll save that, it's gonna do its thing here, calculate that report, and then display the PDF uh, of that. So uh, as I scroll down, it's showing me the sparse point cloud here. Once we start creating like actual image project products from this, it'll show us those image products, which will be a little nicer to look at. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going over these uh, parts of the report. In the lab document, it actually describes uh, each of these, but I do want to point out a couple of things. One being this reprojection error, which is expressed in terms of, of uh, pixels, uh, pixel dimensions. And then uh, down here on uh, table three, the total error values. And, and we're gonna just sort of look at whether or not we can improve upon these uh, total er uh, error values as we go through the refinement process. Okay, so now at this point, um, we're just about ready to start refining the, uh, the, the model, but we need to have some, some metrics for knowing whether our refinements are, uh, are useful or not. And uh, over here on the left, you know, we've been looking at the workspace pane, which really sort of shows like all of the products that we have and the different steps we've gone through. But we can click on this reference tab at the bottom and it will actually open up a, uh, a whole different set of information for us. Um, and so this reference pane at the top gives me uh, all of the photos themselves. And, uh, and then like th this information is just their sort of position and their uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, orientation, right? Um, if I, if I click on this button here, the, the view errors button, it'll actually show me those positional errors like came out of the, uh, of the report. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom here, then it's giving me my X, my Y, and my Z positional errors. And these are the values that are actually uh, listed in the report. And so uh, you know, there's lots of ways to, to evaluate how good of a job we're doing at the optimization, but this is, uh, 
this is sort of one of the, the easier ways to do. Um, you can do the optimization step prior to ground control and then re-optimize after ground control. Um, uh, another sort of strategy is to actually at this stage put your ground control in and then optimize with your ground control in place. That's just a little bit more efficient to do. And uh, we'll, we'll try that out uh, in the next lab. So, okay, so optimization. We wanna identify these low quality points and, uh, and remove them. And if you look down here in the lower left corner of the model window, it shows me these are the total number of, of uh, key points or tie points that I have is just a little over 66,000. Okay, so I've got a lot of tie points to work with here to, uh, to improve this model. And so if I come up here to uh, on the menu to model and gradual selection, it's going to give me a set of criteria that I can use to, uh, um, to identify these low quality uh, tie points, okay? So we're gonna start with this one called reconstruction uncertainty. The, uh, the lab document actually goes through uh, what these things actually mean. Um, so we're gonna do this as a two-step process. Uh, ultimately, we wanna try to uh, get rid of anything with a reconstruction uncertainty greater than 50. And so I can grab this um, slider here, and as I move it, you're gonna see points in the model start to highlight in pink, okay? And, and all of these values in pink, all these points in pink have reconstruction uncertainty values greater than this amount here, right? And you can see that they're not um, evenly distributed across this scene, right? Okay, they're, they're sort of patchly distributed. And so, so at this point, let's pick all of those points that are, have a value greater than 100, okay? Now, that looks like a lot of points on my, uh, on my model here, but if I look down here at, uh, at the bottom, it says it's only uh, you know, 2,300 points out of 66,000, okay? So that's, that's, that's not too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK here. And then I'm gonna come up here to the, the toolbar at the top and there's this X button and it's gonna delete these points, right? So, so now they're gone, okay? I deleted them from the model and if, if, I, if I tip up here, look, that got rid of a lot of these spurious points that I had, okay? So I'm feeling pretty good about that, but I haven't actually changed my model yet. I've just deleted the points and so I need to re-optimize the model and that is this magic wand button here in the reference pane uh, for optimizing. And uh, I'm gonna pick two options here. I'm gonna redo the, uh, the sort of modeling of the camera distortion parameters, and I'm gonna estimate the tie point covariance. And I'm gonna click OK. This is gonna take a minute uh, or so to do. Um, shouldn't take too long to, uh, to re-optimize this. Okay, my re-optimization is done, and if you notice on the, the total error uh, estimates here for, for all the photos, my, uh, my values went down. Now, they've gone down just a slight amount. This is really a pretty good image set that we're working with, uh, so we're not gonna see just enormous gains through this optimization process, but, but we did uh, uh, overall improve the model by a little bit. So now I'm gonna come in and uh, do my gradual selection again, uh, reconstruction uncertainty, and then this time I wanna get rid of everything with a value greater than 50, okay? Um, again, I've got just about 4,000 points here. Um, it looks like I'm gonna remove a ton from this vegetation, but it's really, that there's a lot left in there. So I'm gonna remove those, and I'm gonna re-optimize that and then uh, if you follow the lab document, there are two other uh, optimizations that we do through this gradual selection process um, to uh, further identify low quality tie points and remove those. Uh, the key to all of this is to make sure that you re-optimize after each one of these steps. And uh, uh, otherwise you're just removing points and it's not really having any effect on the model, okay? so you. Uh, identify your points, delete them, re-optimize. 
All right, and so uh, I'm going to go through all of these uh, optimization steps, and then I'll, I'll come back at the end and, uh, and show you what we've got. All right, so here is the final optimized model that I have, and uh, if you look, it looks really clean. Gotten rid of uh, most of those uh, low quality key points. I'm down to about 46,000 tie points total, which is still plenty uh, for this size of area to get a really good model. Uh, my error values, again, they haven't changed a ton, but uh, they have sort of improved overall. And so uh, this is pretty much where we wanted to get to for this lab. Uh, definitely make sure that you save uh, this. Uh, from here on out, it's going to be fairly important that you, uh, that you save your results between labs because uh, in, in many cases we're going to just pick up uh, right where we left off. Um, so uh, if, you, if you don't save it, then it might take a lot of time to recreate the, the steps that we've, uh, that we've done so far. So the last thing that you're going to do here is uh, come in and uh, create a new report here. Uh, this will be your post-optimization report. And then you're going to use the, uh, the sort of compare the pre-optimization and post-optimization uh, figures from the reports to, uh, to answer the questions for the lab. So, uh, so that's it. Uh, all the rest of the information you need is in the lab document. And uh, look forward to uh, seeing what you get. Thanks. Mm -hmm.